Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to the science learning series from the New York Hall of Science. Hi, I'm Jenny. We're both science instructors at the New York Hall of Science. Hey Don, what are we learning about today? Today we're going to explore the properties of air and later we're going to build a device that will shoot a ball of air knocking off different targets. That sounds awesome. Are there any special materials or supplies I'm going to need to go gather before I start these activities? I'm glad you asked, Jenny. I will be doing some demonstration that you don't need any materials for. But for the other activities, here is a list of materials that you will need. Pause here if you need time to gather these supplies. Cardboard, water, paper, ruler, scissors, pencil, a paper cup, plastic food wrap or plastic sandwich bag, rubber band, pen, and access to a sink or bathtub. This video will take about 15 minutes. We'll be mentioning a few science terms during the video. If you would like to check out our vocabulary list, please review them in the write-up. Without further ado, let us begin. So what do we know about air? I mean, if we can't even see it, how do we know it exists at all? Well, I'm going to demonstrate that air is everywhere. I have a bottle right here filled with water. Do you think I can crush this bottle? Well, you just said it's filled with water, so I'm going to say no. Let's see. Ah, uh, well, you're right, Jenny. So the water inside this bottle must be preventing me from crushing the bottle. So I'll pour it out. Now it should be easy to crush the bottle since it's empty and th there's a thin plastic material that's just holding it in place. Do you think I can crush the bottle now? Hypothesis time. Before starting any experiment, scientists always begin with an educated guess or hypothesis. So drawing on all of the knowledge that you already have, what do you hypothesize is going to happen? Do you think Don will be able to crush the bottle? Let's test your hypothesis. Uh, uh, did you expect that to happen? Now, since it was empty, Don, I figured it'd be pretty easy for you to crush, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Is it possible you're just extremely weak? Have you been skipping arm day at the gym? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, Jenny. I do this every day. Uh, uh, but I will prove my strength anyway. The bottle seemed empty, but it's actually filled with air. And the air is preventing me from crushing the bottle, just like the water. But this time, I'm going to remove the cap so that more air can go inside. And I'll even use one hand. Hypothesis time again. Okay, so do you think that Don can actually crush the bottle this time? Are you ready? Three, two, one. That was so easy. Okay, it's actually not my super strength that crushed the bottle. Removing the cap has something to do with it. When I remove the cap, air remains inside the bottle taking up space. But when I squeeze the bottle, the air inside the bottle was pushed out through the opening, making it easier for me to crush the bottle. Wow, Don. So now that we know the air is all around us, how come I don't feel it? Well, we don't usually feel air because your body is used to it. Air actually has weight. Hmm. I realize I've always thought air is kind of weightless since it's just sort of like floating around. In this demonstration, I'm going to prove that air has weight. I'm going to blow air inside of this balloon. We learned that air takes up space, so air is inside of this balloon. But which balloon do you think is heavier? The balloon with air in it, or the balloon without air inside of it? Mm, I think they're going to be the same. How is this going to prove that air has weight? So I built a scale right behind me. It's just a stick hanging on a string with two balloons balancing on it. Think kind of like a seesaw. The stick will tilt down towards the heavier end, 
Well, as we can see right now, they're pretty balanced. What do you think will happen if we remove air from one of the balloons? Let's find out. Well, if I'm right, there won't be any change. But if you're right, and one balloon is heavier, then the scale will move. So there's a pink balloon and a blue balloon. Jenny, which one should I deflate? Blue! So the pink balloon tilted down this way, do you know what that means? This means that the pink balloon on the left is heavier than the blue balloon on the right because the air inside the pink balloon has weight. Pretty cool, right? The weight of the air that's pushing down on you is called air pressure. To better explain air pressure, let's do an activity together. You will need the following materials. A cup, water, a piece of cardboard, and an access to sink or bathtub. Do this activity in your sink or bathtub. Take your cup and fill it three quarters full of water. I'm using a glass so we can see the water inside. Take the cardboard and place it on top of the cup. Then flip the cup upside down while holding the cardboard pressed on the cup. Make sure there is no water leaking from the cup. Hypothesis time. What do you think will happen if we let go of the cardboard? Do you think the water will stay inside of the cup? The water stays inside of the cup, but how? Sorcery. The air is exerting pressure from all directions. The air pressure is pushing upwards on the piece of cardboard and outside of the cup. The air pressure is greater on the outside than the air pressure inside of the cup, keeping the water from spilling out. This proves that air exerts pressure, so it's not sorcery. Even better, it's science. Can we change the air pressure? We can change the air pressure by blowing air on the palm of your hand, for example. Try it. Did you feel the air pushing on the palm of your hand? If you did, that is because there's a difference in air pressure on the palm of your hand compared to the other parts of your hand. In this demonstration, we will learn more about air pressure using this ping pong ball. Right now, the ping pong ball is staying in place. The force of gravity is pulling down on the ball, and at the same time, the table is pushing an equal upward force on the ball. Also, the air around the ball is pushing with an equal force, or the air pressure around it is the same. But is there a way I can move this ball using air? Hmm, blow air on it, or use that hair dryer. Okay, I'll try both. I'll blow on the ping pong ball first, and then I'll try my hair dryer. And it moved! Try this now. Woo! I knew that was going to happen. Hypothesis time. What will happen if I aim the hair dryer up? and place the ping pong ball in the stream of air from the hair dryer. Mm -hmm. Hmm, but how did the ping pong ball stay in midair? Well, obviously it's not because of sorcery, so the obvious guess would be aliens. There are no aliens here, Jenny, but there is an upward force from the moving air blowing from the hair dryer, and an equal gravitational force pulling the ball downward. When I aim the hair dryer from side to side, 
the ball remains inside the stream of air. That's because the stationary air in the room has a higher air pressure than the moving air from the hair dryer, thus pushing the ball back to stay inside the stream of air. Watch carefully how the higher air pressure pushes the ball back toward the stream of air. The ping pong ball will stay in mid-air as long as all of the forces acting on the ball are balanced. You can also try this activity using a balloon, but you will need an adult to help you handle the hair dryer. The floating ping pong ball is an excellent example of Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli was a Swiss mathematician in the 18th century. He discovered that the air pushes less when the air is moving faster on the surface of an object, or there is a lower air pressure. The air pushes more when there is a slower airflow on the surface of an object, or it has a higher air pressure. The air also has a tendency to move from high pressure to low pressure. His discovery is also known as Bernoulli's principle. Let's test Bernoulli's principle by doing an activity with me. But first, you're going to need to gather the following materials. Paper, a ruler, a scissor, and a pencil. First, put the paper the short way, this way. And then on the top corner, let's mark an inch away from the corner. Okay, I'm going to use my marker. Then draw a straight line starting from that mark. And then carefully use her scissor to cut that line. And there you have it, your strip of paper. Now that you have your strip of paper, you're going to put the strip of paper under your lower lip, just like this. And then you're going to blow a steady flow of air on top of the paper. Now which direction do you think this paper will move? Will it go down, up, or not at all? What do you think? Hmm. Well, if you're blowing on it, I think that it's going to blow down, right? Let's try it on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. <gasps> the paper moves up because the fast moving air on the top of the paper creates a lower air pressure and the higher air pressure at the bottom of the paper pushes the paper to move up. Check out this toy that uses air pressure. This is called an air zooka. That looks like a small garbage bin with a plastic bag tied to one side. How does it work? Well, you hold the handle at the bottom and on the back, you're going to pull this elastic band this way and then let go. You can't see it, but a puff of air came out of the air zooka. Oh, cool. I want to see if it can knock off objects in your house. Sure. Let's see if we can hit some of these cups. Well, sounds like you're having too much fun there, Don. I wish I could play, but I don't have the money to buy one and I definitely can't wait for delivery. We can make an air zooka with materials we can find at home. You will need a paper cup, a pen, a rubber band, a plastic food wrap, and a scissor. Hold the cup and poke the bottom of the cup using your pen. Make the hole bigger using your scissor. about three quarters to about an inch in diameter. 
then on the top of the cup you want to cover it with saran wrap or any plastic you can find at home so if it's too big feel free to cut it cover the top of the cup with plastic and wrap a rubber band around it pull it tight and your air zuka is ready check out my air zuka we're now going to make targets for our air zuka we're going to need some scrap paper but i found this nice orange paper so i'm going to use this one instead so first you're going to cut or tear a little piece of that piece of paper and then you're going to fold your targets Right, line them up. All right, let's see. You can also try different types of paper, regular paper, so maybe some paper towel or some cotton balls or anything that's small and light that you can find at home. How do you think the air zuka works? To better explain what is happening, I'm going to add fog inside the container to see the movement of air. Releasing the elastic band with the plastic material pushes the air inside the container through the hole. Notice how the ball of air is actually a ring shape caused by spinning air called the vortex. The air spins because the air leaving the center of the hole is traveling faster than the air leaving around the edge of the hole. But how does the vortex maintain its ring shape? The vortex has a lower air pressure and the stationary air around the vortex has a higher air pressure, pushing the vortex in to maintain its ring shape. Well that's it for today, but before we end this video, let's recap what we learned. We've learned that air around us takes up space and it has weight. We also learned that air exerts pressure on all directions, making this trick possible. We saw how balanced forces acting on our ping pong ball such as high and low air pressure and the force of gravity kept the ping pong ball in midair. Through Bernoulli's principle we learned that faster air means low air pressure and slower air means high air pressure that cause our strip of paper to move up. We made our very own homemade air zuka to create a vortex that can knock off our paper targets. And finally, we saw how the vortex ring is formed from our air zuka and how it maintains its shape because of the surrounding higher air pressure that keeps the ring together. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, goodbye!